think you're fooling me, young lady. I didn't meet you yesterday. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Mortar. I know what I know, and every time that man comes into this house, you're in a bad humor. It seems like you just can't stand the idea of Karen being with Joe. You're jealous. That's what it is. I'm perfectly fond of Joe, and you know it. Now, I don't know who you're fond of. Every woman gets jealous when another woman gets a husband. You've always had a jealous and possessive nature. Even as a child, whenever you had a friend, you always got mad if she liked anyone else. It's unnatural, just as unnatural as it can be. Mrs. Mortar, the sooner you get out of here, the better. I want you to leave. Oh. <gasps> Grandma won't believe this. Outlook journalist Ernest Hamlin Abbott once said, rumors are not news, but they sometimes foreshadow the news. In the 1930s, shortly after college, two young women, Karen Wright and Martha Doby, start a boarding school for girls. When a troublesome schoolgirl named Mary spreads a rumor to her influential grandmother, these two teachers' reputations are tarnished forever. Karen and Martha must overcome oppression and discover if maybe this rumor with such a cruel intention has an ounce of truth. The Children's Hour by Lillian Hellman. Did you get Joe himself on the phone? He was already on his way. Isn't he always on his way over here? Oh, Martha, I am going to marry him. I'm glad he wants to see me. You haven't talked about marriage in a long time. I mean, you and Joe have decided on? Yes, we'll be married as soon as the term is over. We'll be out of debt by then, and the school will be paying for itself. You really are going to leave, aren't you? Why do you say things like that? We agreed a long time ago that my marriage is not going to interfere with my work here. It's going to be hard going on alone afterwards. You are not going on alone. You talk as if you had never taken my marriage very seriously. <gasps> What's the matter, Mary? Nothing, Miss Karen. Well, there must be something wrong or you wouldn't make up these stories so often. I'm not lying. I went out walking and I saw the flowers and Mary, I'm not interested in hearing that foolish story. I know you got the flowers out of the garbage can. You believe everyone but me. Well, there doesn't seem to be any other way to deal with you. You'll have to be punished. <gasps> Take your recreational periods alone for the next two weeks. I'll tell my grandmother. I'll tell her how you and everybody else treats me here and how I get punished for every little thing I do. I'll tell her. Go right ahead. Go and tell your grandmother just how much we mistreat you here. Grandma would believe me and take me away from here. <laughs> Ding! Oh! <laughs> oh, Grandma, it's so good to see you. I miss you so. I was awful homesick. But how did you get here? Did Miss Karen drive you over? I ran away, Grandma. That was a very bad thing to do, Mary. They'll be worried. I'll phone Miss Karen and tell her that you're here. No, Grandma. Don't do that. Please let me stay. You don't know how they'll punish me. Why, I've never heard such nonsense. What have they ever done to you that is so terrible? They have secrets, and they're afraid I'll find out and tell you. There is nothing wrong with people having secrets. But they have funny ones. Mrs. Mortar said it, that it was unnatural for girls to feel like that. I'm just telling you what she said. You always said I should tell you things that worry me. Plenty of things I've heard worry me, Grandma. Well, what were they? I tell you, but I've got to whisper it. Why must you whisper it? Oh! <gasps> no, you will not have to go back there. <laughs> See if you can make any sense of it. At dinner time, Mrs. Munn's chauffeur arrived and said that Evelyn was to be sent home right away. At half past seven, Mrs. Munn's chauffeur came to tell us that she wanted Helen's things packed immediately and that she'd wait outside because she didn't want to enter a place like ours. Why? Mrs. Rogers finally told us. What? She said that you and I have been been 
lovers that Mary's grandmother told them. Oh, you crazy, crazy old woman! You did say it! You knew what you were saying! Yes, I knew what I was saying, and I don't think you should have come here. You're not playing with paper dolls here. We're human beings, see? It's our lives you're playing with. Our lives! I understand that, and I understand a lot more. You've been playing with a lot of children's lives, and that's why I've stopped you. You have done a terrible thing. I have done what I had to do. It becomes a great deal more when children are concerned in it. It's not true! Not a word of this is true! Your Mary's a strange girl, an awful girl. There's something incredibly wrong with her. No matter what you say, you know very well that I wouldn't have acted until I was sure. All I wanted was to get those children away from you. You've been in my house long enough. Get out. What time is it, Martha? We've been sitting here for eight days, just asking each other the time. Well, let's go out. Joe said that we've got to go out. He said that all the people who don't think it's true will begin to wonder if we keep hiding this way. If it makes you feel better to think there are such people, go ahead. What are we doing here like this? I don't know. It's as if we're in some kind of nightmare. Where is Joe? Will he be back in time for supper? He won't be back. He won't be back at all. What happened to Karen? He thought that you and I had been lovers. For God's sake, didn't you tell him it wasn't true? I don't ever want to talk about this, Martha. There are some people who believe in it, who've chosen it for themselves. We aren't like that. We don't love each other. I've loved you like a friend, the way thousands of women do. I'm cold. You were a dear friend. That's all. Certainly there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly natural that I should be fond of you. Well, we've known each other since we were 17. Why are you saying all of this? I love you. Yes, of course. I love you, too. I have loved you the way they've said. Stop that crazy talk. You're afraid of hearing it, but I can't keep it to myself any longer. Karen, I've got to tell you. I'm guilty. I won't listen to you. You are guilty of nothing. It's all mixed up. There's something in you, and you don't know it's there, so you don't do anything about it. And then all of a sudden, a little girl gets bored and tells a lie. There, that night, you see it for the first time and you say it to yourself. Karen, she found the lie with the ounce of truth. But none of this is true. And we don't have to remember it was ever said. Go and lie down, Martha. I'll make you some tea and bring it to you. No. No, don't bring me any tea, thank you. Good night, darling. 